Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today what we're going to do is we're going to break out Big Bertha in this black box. And we got the fluke out here too. This is an insulation tester. It'll do up to a thousand volts insulation test. So we're going to give it a go. We're going to see if these meters will actually withstand a thousand volts. Okay. You know, one thing I want to talk about, you know, I'm going to talk about a little bit after the test, okay? I'm going to talk about safety, and I've done a lot of videos on category ratings and, you know, about safety. And so, uh, I'll put those links down below, but I'll talk a little bit about it at the end of uh, when we come back after the test, all right? So, we're going to try the KM601 first, the big boy. If he survives... Then we're going to try this little guy. Okay? So, raise your hands. Who thinks they're going to survive? They're ready for 1,000 volts DC. I know some of you guys are, uh, you know, skeptics, right? <laughs> and uh, so, we're going to talk about that. Uh, what's going to happen if they fail? Are they going to blow up? You know? So, anyway. Let's bring the camera over. Stick this guy. Bring out Big Bertha here. I think I'm in a car, Big Bertha. Uh, call this guy Big Ben, maybe. I don't know. Um, our little high voltage machines, and we'll see how they see how they handle it. Okay. You know, I started doing this one time, by the way, on it got probably a year or so ago. Uh, did some low cost meters, and I just kind of forgot to throw that into my testing. So I'm going to include that again, just to. Uh, you know, we'll check every meter, okay? Let's check these guys out. Hopefully I can still, uh, I think I'm going to give this guy away. Hopefully it'll still be worth giving away, right? I don't want to give away a damage meter. Let's test him. Alright guys, thought we'd start off the lower cost uh, Kiwit. It's a smart meter here, the KM312B. Got it turned on. Oh, you know what? we got to get in volt setting because we don't want it to automatically set so it's you get get to DC. Okay, there's DC. All right, so it should read the voltage that we're going to test to. We got the Fluke 1587 insulation meter, and this setting here, the last one's for insulation. I know you can't see it; it's kind of wore off. I got this fancy new probe. If you guys need one of these new probes, I'll put the link below because. I got this at a better price and you'll buy it from Fluke. And then I've got the negative lead going directly in the meter. So the plus is going to here to this fancy probe. Okay? And it's fancy because I got a button right here. So, um, okay, here we go. I'm going to push this. Oh, I got this set for 500 volts. We're going to start off at 500. I think it should do at least that, right? I'm holding it. On the meter, oh, there you go. 525 and up here it says 525. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see that better. So I'll hold the installation button down. Okay, it's saying 525 on both meters, and this says 10 mega ohms. So it's it's an installation. It's reading 10 megs, and that's the input of the meter, right? I don't remember if there's a timer on this thing. I'm just holding it down to see if it beeps at me. I forget, it's been a while since I've used it. If you're doing this for like an agency test, usually it's like a, a minute you hold it. It could be that things are slowly breaking down and then they finally break down so you just kind of hold on to it. But it's holding pretty darn steady, isn't it? All right, I'm probably boring you. Okay, let's go to 1,000 volts. There we go. Okay, ready? Set. All right, the Kiwitz is complaining because it only goes up to 1,000, so it doesn't like that. And we're at 1,050. So we're a little bit over 1,000. It's saying 10 mega ohms. So we haven't broken anything down because we're still reading 10 mega ohms over here. Kaiwis is just warning us that we're, you know, out of range. 
Okay, just want to make sure you feel like I'm testing this long enough. Okay, and we're back. Okay, so now I guess the real test is to see if it still reads voltage, right? Okay, I got these leads from my power supply, so let's uh, hook those guys up. Just connect these guys together. Okay. And right now my power supply says 0.55 and the meter's reading pretty close to that, isn't it? So let me take my voltage up to, I'll put it to 12 volts. It's kind of sensitive, so hold on a sec. All right, so yeah, looks like it's doing a good job. I'm gonna just max out my power supply to 31.85, and yeah, looks like it's working. All right, just to be sure, let's pull out a backup meter here. This is my big Bertha, this one was in the case. Okay, I'll just pull it out of the case here. I'm gonna show you where I what I got in this case it's just another insulation tester it's just a newer version uh, X-Tac this is a nice meter you can tell it's looking new okay I've got this down into it actually timed out when I put in the case let's see I, I powered it up just to make sure I had batteries and yeah the batteries are good okay so uh, okay so let's go ahead and hook those leads from the meter directly into here red red and make sure you get the right lead and let's see that's for the insulation those two leads right there okay so got those going in make sure everything's good okay that's 500 volts let's go ahead and hit the button okay it's testing uh 526 at 9.87 meg and Kaiweet says it's 530 so pretty close 526 9.87 is holding steady we're not breaking down any insulation it's looking good all right boring you okay let's go to a thousand volts Okay, and just to let you know, this guy is like the fluke. It has a bunch of different ranges. So let's go to 1,000. Let's try that. Shoot, I was hoping it was going to be... Okay, so 9.85 mega ohms. The Kiwis doesn't like it. It's complaining. But the resistance, 9.85, holding steady. We got 10, 28 volts on the Kiwites. All right, so what do you think? Okay, we'll hook this back to the power supply again. Make sure we're seeing voltage. Let's go red to, here, I don't even need these things, I guess. Red to yellow. Doesn't matter if I read plus or minus, huh? Okay. Oh, I still had the power supply turned up. So, yeah, it's 31.87 on my thing, 31.91 here. So, yeah, I guess we just jumped to the chase. So, there we go. The little guy made it. Should we still test the big one? All right, let's do it. All right, so I swapped out the, the leads and everything. And here, let's go to uh, DC voltage. Oh, they're shorted. <laughs> I thought I still had voltage. Okay, there we go. 31.72. All right. So let's go from that to this guy again. Okay. And make sure I'm set up right. Yep. Okay. Everything looks good. We're just going to go right to 1,000 volts this time. Yep, we're uh, DC reading. Okay, yep, because we already test that. 9.74 meg. 
and 1028 volts. You know, the Kiwitz isn't uh, beeping at us like the other one. But it's not giving us any voltage reading either. You can see the bar graph's maxed out. Jeez, wouldn't you know it. Uh, battery in my camera ran out, and then my memory card filled up. So, jeez. Okay, let's, let's do the fluke, okay? Uh, right now it's reading 31.73, hooked into the power supply. So let's disconnect the mines terminal here, stick it into the fluke, the meter, Take the plus lead here, and we'll stick it into this guy, okay, and then I'll just hold this down, let me see if everything looks good, I've got my microphone cable, hopefully that, eh, that's probably not a good thing to have mixed in a high voltage, right, okay, here we go, here we are, ready, set, 9.8 mega ohms over here on the on the fluke. There we go. I think the battery is starting to wear down on this fluke, so I think that's why the meter kind of charged up there a little bit. So 1051 volts. It doesn't beep like the other one did. I kind of like the beeping thing. It's nice warning, I think. So that's something to be aware of too. It's nice to have the the warning. You can see the bar graph maxed out. Okay, so let's go back to the power supply. Minus one to the power supply. And yeah, unfazed. Same voltage, right? Uh, looks like the X Tech got tired of me. Everything else was. Uh, running out of batteries on me. All right guys, so what do you think? Are you surprised? You know, I haven't had a meter fail yet. I haven't tested a ton, but I've tested a lot of the lower cost meters back about a year ago, and then I kind of got tired of, well, I kind of forgot to keep testing that, but I think I will keep testing that just to keep showing the, uh, you know, having a thousand volts on a meter isn't the scariest thing around. The thing is, is uh, in a category two on a workbench, if you did have a thousand volts, I don't know what you'd have that would be a thousand volts. Let me know. Uh, uh, if you're doing tube amplifiers, I don't. You're not going to have a thousand volts, right? But if you have 300 volts, 600 volts, things like that. Thing is, is it's all low energy. It's all on this side of our breaker panel for one thing. And then if you're doing it off a plug strip, you might even have another fuse. And if you think about it, most of the equipment around here. They just have glass fuses in them. They don't have high rupture capacity fuses. And that's because, unless you're working in a Category 3 or Category 4 area, you don't have high energy. And that's where things get scary. Pretty scary stuff. Category 3, Category 4, scary stuff. Stuff on the bench, not so scary. Still can kill you. You got to be safe. But, yeah, not quite as scary. Not Nowhere near as scary. But, again, can be dangerous for sure. So... Always be safe, always be careful, and I always hook up everything before I turn on power so I don't have to touch things once power's on. I try to do it that way. If I'm probing around, I'm very careful, but yeah, always be careful. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.